Assalamualaikum dan salam sejahtera. Okay, so uh, today uh, our lecture will be about the thermal circuit uh, for uh, cylindrical and spherical uh, shape. Okay, so uh, that is our uh, last. Basically, this this is our last uh, uh, lecture for chapter. Chapter One for heat transfer. Okay, so uh, in our previous lecture, we have learned about uh, thermal circuit uh, for uh, multi-layer plane wall. Okay, so if you still remember, our uh, last lecture is about multi-layer plane wall. Okay, so when we talk about multi-layer, it comes with uh, it might be different of material for each layers okay so that's why uh, when these layers are in contact with each other we need to consider the thermal contact resistance okay so as you can see here in this phase, uh, first um, uh, figure okay here uh, this is an ideal uh, situation, okay. Ideal situation. What is ideal situation? Uh, mean that we are not considering any uh, imperfect uh, surface contact between the uh, between those two layers, okay. So uh, in that cases, in that case, no temperature drop are considered. So that uh, we are considering T uh, at this uh, interface at the point of interface uh, temperature 1 equal to temperature temperature 2 okay so there is an ideal situation where in our previous analysis we considered or always consider an ideal situation ataupun perfect uh, condition okay but uh, we are still need to consider or we are still need to learn uh, the the actual situation okay actual situation for the interface between layers okay so as you can see in this figure figure b it is for the actual imperfect thermal contact okay so what is actual if we, we can zoom uh, by using the uh, microstructure uh, 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 tools okay we can see that uh, when we zoom the interface we can see an imperfect okay, imperfect uh, interface between these two layers okay so this imper this imperfect uh, for the actual uh, will uh, introduce what we call uh, insulator okay what we call an insulator for this within this imperfect or the gap region within uh, this gap region okay so this gap region can uh, might be filled with air okay so when it is uh, filled with air it can be it can act as insu insulator okay insulator mean that uh, when we add the insulator it can uh, reduce uh, can reduce the q Q dot, okay. Q dot might be reduced, okay. So, if the if for the actual situation, as you can see here, there are temperature drop, okay. Temperature drop uh, that we need to consider, okay. So, this is the ideal and also the perfect. Uh, sorry, the ideal and also the actual thermal contact for multi layers plane, uh, plane wall, okay. So. Uh, temperature distribution and heat flow lines alo along two solid plates press against each other for the case of perfect okay for the case of perfect and also uh, imperfect contact okay so uh, uh, in reality surface have some roughness okay uh, when two surface are press press against each other the fixed form good material uh, Con, uh, conductor what's filled with with air okay so in that case uh, 
uh, as I mentioned in previous slide, there will be a gap that fill with air. Okay, and then this gap acting as insulator. Okay, so uh, interface offers some resistance to heat transfer, which is termed the thermal contact resistance, ataupun R RC, which is resistant for the heat, as we, as we learn in uh, thermal thermal circuit. Okay, so the value of thermal contact resistance depends on surface roughness. Okay, different material will uh, will have different surface roughness. Okay, so for the glass, even though uh, we can see uh, it is a smooth surface, but in reality, maybe it uh, there are some surface roughness that need to be considered. Okay, and then material properties. So different material, as I mentioned. Uh, will have different uh, contact resistance temperature and pressure at the interface type of fluid trapped at the interface type of fluid mean that it can be air it can be any gases okay so uh, in reality uh, when uh, in order to avoid the thermal contact resistance we are using uh, some uh, grease for example eh? for example we use grease in order to reduce the thermal contact resistance uh, between any uh, two uh, any two parts okay uh, around the around the interface okay so that is one of the example and then uh, uh, in order to find the uh, q dot eh? q dot mean that q dot uh, for the contact and then q dot gap inside the gap inside the gap for the imperfect uh, contact okay so uh, ideally we use uh, rate of heat transfer for the convection okay so this is for uh, convection q dot his c a delta delta t interface so his c basically equal to q dot divided by a, a, a area divided by uh, delta t temperature different at the interface okay and then rc Okay, RC equal to 1 over HC. Okay, so if from this equation, RC equal to delta T interface divided by Q dot and then over over A. Okay, so there is the thermal contact resistance. Okay, so that you need to know for our, uh, for any uh, uh, plane walls or any cylinder pipe that in contact with another uh, material or different material. Okay, so that is thermal contact resistance, and then now we are moving to uh, thermal resistance method or thermal circuit method uh, for the cylinders. Okay, uh, for the cylinders mean that uh, let's say uh, a very simple example we have uh, let's say you have this uh, pipe. Okay, so long pipe. Okay, and then inside this pipe there is filled with steam okay in power plant it will be uh, filled with steam okay inside this pipe okay so there will be uh, steam water steam and then the pipe okay so steam is moving okay steam is moving mean that there are convection and also advection and then uh, steam will transfer heat okay steam will transfer heat Okay, will transfer Q, Q dot. Okay, so in order to keep the temperature inside the pipe, okay, to keep the temperature, we need to do to uh, to install uh, insulator. Okay, insulator around the around the pipe. Okay, so uh, in that sense, how to calculate uh, how to calculate the Q dot with thermal resistance method? Okay, ataupun thermal circuit method, as we learn for uh, as we have learned for thermal uh, circle, sorry, thermal circuit method for plane, uh, plane wall. Okay, so at first we need to identify how, how to identify the uh, RC, sorry, the resistance, resistance for the conductor. Okay, resistance for the conductor. In order to to calculate the resistance for the conductor, we need to use. Uh, also, this is the example. Okay, we need to use uh, steady and one-dimensional analysis. Okay, so as I mentioned before, 
steady means it is not uh, uh, changing with time and then we are considering one dimensional heat transfer okay so uh, the temperature of the pipe in this case depends on one direction only okay the radial r direction and exp express as t in tr okay in radial direction okay so we uh, that's why we are considering only one dimensional and this one dimensional is in radial direction in radius direction eh? r as you can see here okay so we know that for q dot in thermal circuit method it is equal to t hot ataupun t1 any uh, any uh, notation t1 minus t2 divided by by r okay so r is resistant for the for the heat okay so now uh, for the cylinder or pipe how to determine that r okay so how to determine that resistor to determine that resistor uh, we are considering uh, this q dot conduction in cylinder okay conduction in between uh, this uh, pipe or cylinder so this is q dot here q dot conduction so uh, we know that conduction equal to minus k a dt over d dx okay in which dx is replaced by d dr okay because now we are considering one dimensional in radial in radial direction only okay so now we are uh, changing our uh, Fourier law instead of dx into radius or d dr radial direction okay so that is uh, the first step and then how to find the uh, resistance okay how to find the resistance resistance can be find by uh, integrate okay by integrate the uh, by integrate this equation Okay, so the forest law for cylindrical uh, shape. Okay, forest law for the cylindrical uh, shape. Okay, so uh, by uh, how to say that by uh, simplify the Q dot. Okay, uh, uh, Q dot divided by a. Okay, Q dot divided by a, and then. Uh, a equal to uh, 2 pi rl okay, surface area surface area for a uh, is 2 pi rl okay surface area for a remember that the uh, 2 pi r rl okay so integrate in terms of r okay because r is variation changing with the dimension so integrate with respect to the dr and then in the right hand side it is equal to minus k dt okay dt because we have the dt in our original equation okay and then we integrate dt we get t1 minus uh, t2 okay t1 minus t2 and then integrate r okay integrate r sorry integrate 1 over r over sorry uh, we respect with the dr okay so by solving this integration we can we get the final equation for the uh, cylindrical uh, coordinate system it is equal to q dot conduction 2 pi l k okay, uh, 2 pi l and then k 2 pi l k uh, t1 minus t2 negative is uh, the the minus sign is now changing with the t1 and t t2 okay so 2 pi l k t1 minus t2 divided by uh, integrate 1 over r you will get ln r2 minus ln r1 or it is equal to ln r2 divided by r r1 Okay, so there is uh, for uh, integration of 1 over 1 over r. Okay, so q dot conduction now equal to 2 pi l k 
T1 minus T2 ln R2 over R1. Okay. Same for plane wall, how to find the R, okay. thermal resistance for uh, for the cylindrical shape. Okay. So now, um, we know that uh, for in order to do or to use the thermal resistance method, uh, Q dot conduction or Q dot equal to T1 minus T2 divided by R. Okay, divided by resistance. Okay, and then uh, by dividing the resist uh, by using the previous equation, okay, we can conclude that R cylindrical equal to ln R2 over R1 2 pi L minus sorry 2 pi L multiplied by K K, which is the uh, K1 is the thermal conductivity for material or pipe at, at radial or at R1. Okay, so that is how to calculate the R cylindrical. Okay, so let's move to previous slide. Okay, so we know that Q dot conduction equal to uh, 2 pi L K T1 minus T2 divided by uh, non. Okay, non R2 over R R1. Okay, so how to transfer this equation to become this equation in order to use thermal circuit or thermal resistance method. So that by replace by moving this 2 pi L K here 2 pi L L K. So this 2 pi L K sorry ln R2 over R1 divided by 2 pi L K basically the thermal resistance for uh, uh, for the cylindrical okay so this is how to find the r cylindrical okay now we move to multi layer okay multi layer cylinder and sphere okay so for the sphere it is similar okay uh, uh, the only difference is uh, the area for the cylinder is 2 pi rl and then area for sphere is different uh, equation okay so uh, just change the uh, area uh, equation for the sphere okay and then we know that for the multi layer as you can see here if we have this multi layer cylinder okay you can imagine uh, the steam pipe and then it is in order to keep the temperature for the steam uh, we need to insulate okay by for, by uh, any insulator foam okay uh, around the uh, pipe okay so this is can uh, can be assumed as insulator k1 uh, k2 and k3 now three insulator that cover that particular pipe okay so uh, same uh, inside the pipe Okay, inside the pipe we have a moving uh, for example we have a moving steam okay moving steam it is convection so that we have h1 and t ambient t ambient one here inside the cylinder okay and then we have r1 for the pipe and then r1 for the pipe r2 okay for the insulator number one r3 for insulator number three and R4 for insulator number 4 and then not to forget is the effect of convection or the combined effect of convection and radiation outside the pipe okay so that's why we have uh, convection heat transfer coefficient and also T ambient T ambient 2 okay so uh, this is the situation now how to uh, calculate uh, or how to draw the thermal Circuit. Okay, so we start with T ambient one. Okay, here T ambient one, and then in between T ambient one, steam and pipe. Okay, this is pipe, which is T one. We have R con convection. Okay, so R convection, and then T one to T two, and between this surface to this surface, T one to T two, which is R conduction for cylinder, and then T2 to T3 and other resistance R cylindrical number 2 and R cylindrical number 3 and last but not least is R convection 2 outside the 
outside the pipe and then we reach the T ambient 2 okay, T ambient 1 is high temperature T ambient 2 is low low temperature okay we know that in order to find the Q dot T ambient 1 minus T ambient 2 divided by R R total so how to calculate the R total R convection 1 plus R cylindrical or R conduction 1 R conduction 2, R conduction 3, and R convection 2, which is outside the, the pipe. Okay, so R convection is similar equation, which is 1 over H A. Okay, A. What is A? A equal to 2 pi R1 L. So, this is A, A1. Okay, and then R cylindrical 1, which is uh, resistant for pipe or cylindrical, we have learned before ln, ln R2 over R1, which is R2 here, over R1 here, okay. R2 over R1 divided by 2 pi L, K. L is length for the pipe, and then K1 is material thermal conductivity for pipe number, for insulator or material number number 1 can move on to pipe number 2 so insulator number 2 ln R3 here is R3 and then this is R2 ok so hit from here to here so mean that R3 and R2 ln R3 ln R2 2 pi L K K2 thermal conductivity for material number 2 and then for pipe number 3 or insulator number 3 it is here R4 and also R R3 okay R4 and R3 ln R4 over R3 2 pi L K3 plus 1 over H2 which is the last one which is convection H2 A4 A4 uh, outside area for the for the pipe okay so how to find A, A4 A4 equal to 2 pi R, which R, which it is R, R4, R4, L. Okay, so this is how to calculate the uh, thermal resistant, uh, how to calculate the thermal resistant method in uh, cylinder. Okay, so uh, since we are dealing with steady and one dimensional uh, thermal and uh, sorry steady and one dimensional heat transfer it is steady mean that q dot that you obtain here it is always equal to q dot convection equal to q dot conduction one q dot conduction conduction two three and four and so on okay so there is for steady state analysis okay okay so in spherical as I mentioned, uh, R now for the R spherical, R2 minus R1 divided by area to 4 pi, R1, R2, and, and K. So, this is conduction resistance of the spherical, spherical layer. Okay. So, uh, this is uh, for similar slide as before. Okay. So, that is how to calculate the thermal resistance uh, for cylinder and sphere okay in our last lecture we are talking about critical radius of insulator insulation okay so uh, why we are uh, cons uh, why we are we need to consider the critical radius for any insulator uh, the first reason because we need to calculate okay we need to calculate either the by adding insulator the q dot is increase or q dot is decrease okay because uh, in some extent okay uh, by uh, insulate your pipe if the critical sorry if the radius of your insulator is less than critical radius Okay, critical radius here the rate of heat transfer is increased okay which is um, which is uh, uh, not 
the purpose of insulator okay uh, as i mentioned before uh, the purpose of insulate any material is to reduce okay to reduce the rate of heat transfer not to increase the rate of heat transfer okay so that's why uh, we need to consider that critical radius okay so how to to calculate the critical radius it is r critical divided by sorry, uh, k over k over h k is for the thermal conductivity for any particular uh, uh, insulator h is um, convection heat transfer coefficient okay so uh, k over h and then for sphere to k over over h okay so as you can see here as i mentioned uh, before for this graph q dot versus r okay r2 is r for the insulator okay as you can see here uh, q q will only be decreased okay decrease when uh, r2 is greater okay, is greater than r r critical okay in that instance r if the r2 is lower than r critical you will not achieve your objective of uh, insulate your pipe okay or any material Okay, so because as you can see here, if the R, okay, R2 is less than R critical, the rate of heat transfer is increased, okay, not decreased. So, uh, this is not the objective of insulator, okay. So, that's why we need to consider the critical radius. However, in, in, uh, how to say that, in, real situation uh, when we uh, take a maximum insulator okay k max for any insulator is 0 0.05 watt per meter degree c and then h, h minimum equal to 5 watt per meter square degree c we obtain the critical radius r critical is only one centimeter okay so it's very uh, small the critical radius so in in that case we are we are not even to bother about the critical radius because it is too small the critic the critical radius only one centimeter if you see in any insulator okay any insulator you can see your home your insulator uh, in uh, for the piping system for the for your air conditioner your home uh, for split air conditioner you can see the insulator uh, the insulator thickness is more than one centimeter okay so that is a uh, critical radius of insulator so uh, for this uh, uh, the uh, we need to, to know the critical radius just for the fundamental study so that you are not doing any uh, mistake of uh, of uh, insulate uh, uh, any material of pipe which is less than critical radius okay so uh, that's all for chapter one uh, for the critical radius of uh, insulator okay thank you very much assalamualaikum dan uh, salam sejahtera